Hello and welcome to a new video. In this video, I'll be presenting you my no recall program, which I'll, I've been working on for a little time. And I will be talking about how you can achieve such creation of a program like this. Today, I won't be focusing too much on the code. And instead, I'll focus on something different, which is crucial for you actually creating such program. Now, the way this works is completely different from my previous cheating videos. It does not touch the memory of the game. It uses the send input function to emulate mouse movement and displace my mouse accordingly so that it replicates the compensation pattern of different guns, such as the AK-47, the M4A4, or M4A1S. I will link this program as a source on GitHub in the description below, so that you can take a closer look for yourself and under actually understand what's going on at a deeper level. I did put a lot of comments trying to explain what I'm doing, but in this video, I'll be focusing on mainly how you can get the no recall compensation values that will be given to the send input to replicate the recall compensation pattern. So now let's actually get into it. First of all, I will need to talk. A, I will want to talk a little bit about the game. Games such as CS2 and modern games they use something known as raw input for mouse movement, meaning it actually uh, it actually takes into account the actual movement of the physical mouse that you have connected to your uh, device, and it doesn't care about. For example, the window sensitivity that you have currently selected on your system. The reason why it's that, uh, why that's significant is because when we will measure the displacement of pixels using applications such as GIMP to get the compensation value and try to replicate that, it will not move actually, for example, 15 pixels from the calculated 15 pixels that we saw as displacement. It will move to something different. And what we will have to do is find a scaling factor for that so that when we find the no recall compensation values, we will scale them up accordingly. When we use send input, we will actually fully replicate gun recall compensation pattern. First of all, we need to know and understand how you can get the no recall compensation values forming the pattern. Well, this is really simple. You simply select the gun that you want to use and don't care too much about the distance. Distance is not important. It's not a significant factor. But I will admit that it is. it will be better if you would stand at a moderate distance from a wall, such as this. Right now I'm on a recall master stupid fucking map. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't matter where you really are. These are the commands that you will need to have. First of all, you will need to have your no spread on, on so that spread of the gun will not affect what you will calculate as the compensation pattern. Next, you will need to set the time for the impacts to be seen to something high. Now, by the impacts, I mean the gunshots, because there is another command, which is this one, show impacts one will, which is simply used as to show the impact of the bullets, basically the bullet holes, by using these little boxes, such as this. All you need to do now is aim down, or aim really whatever you want. Hold your shooting key, and just wait and empty a mag. Next, I will want you to take a screenshot of this. Good. So now, to continue the process of getting the compensation values, you will need to go and open GIMP. You will need to get GIMP. GIMP is a free application, which is similar to Photoshop. Nice. All right. Next, you will actually need to flip this image using the flipping tool, which can be found here by right-clicking here and selecting flip. You'll need to flip it vertically and horizontally. And now some people will my, will find this pretty familiar as to be the AK-47 recall compensation pattern. Now from here, you would just need to use the measuring tool, which can be found here, and just measure the distance between the display the distance between each shot of pixels, because the send input does displace your mouse by pixel values. We will need to do this for each shot. And then after that, you will need to scale it accordingly so that that send input, when it will be used when playing a game, it will actually replicate this exact pattern. And actually, I'll show you this in action. I made this little program to show you. Let's say to compensate one shot of a gun, you will need to move 100 pixels downwards because you found 100 pixels to be the compensation value on GIMP and actually move it. So you just need to open the game and now just shoot. Press the key that you're going to see this. Hmm. So let me repeat it to you. We're trying to see if this is indeed a hundred pixels apart. We calculated it 
be 100 pixels apart in the image when you want it to be 100 pixels apart. Oh, let's actually get this. Use this measuring tool. You're going to see it's 27, not 100. And if you do it this multiple times, you're going to see that's going to be the same thing. To calculate the scalar factor, it's really easy. You simply divide 100 by 27. So the value in which you wanted to displace and the actual value was the displacement in the game. And this will be the factor. Meaning if you would want to move, let's say, 10 pixels from up to down in game, you will need to give send input 10 pixels times 3.7. All right, for now it's good, but I need to mention something. This 3.7 is a decimal, it's a float, it's a double, and that can be a problem because send input is strictly made to use integers only. Why? Because send input, as I said, it displaces pixels. You cannot displace a fraction of one pixel. It doesn't work that way. So what can you do? Well, you can simply round up this scalar factor. And in this case, it's 3 plus 7, so it rounds to 4, meaning that the scalar factor is 4. So let's actually try this in action. We want to move 100 pixels. We multiply 100 by 4. I forgot the program was open. Fuck. Start this. Let it load a little bit. Shoot. Let's actually get closer so that it's not the value is not distorted. Oh, fuck. Shoot. Like this. Bam. As I said, distance really matter. Put it inside. Calculate the distance from this shot to this shot. And let's see, is it 100 pixels or close to it? Yes, it is. It's 110 pixels, which is great. It's really close to our desired value, meaning that when you're going to calculate the no recall compensation uh, values from the no recall compensation pattern that you got from a screenshot, you'll just need to multiply every single value by 4 and then just put it in, I guess, into an array. Just how I did it in this program. No recall program. So let me show you. It's simply right here. Everything is multiplied by 4. So let's talk a little bit about something else. I found this website called I just searched CS2 spray patterns. Now, why am I showing you this? Well, because when you will have to calculate the recall pattern, let me actually go back, all right, you might get here and you might go like, oh, do I measure from here to here, from here to here, or from here to here? What's going on? So what you can do, you can go to a website such as this, which has every single recall pattern, no compensation listed. You can just take a screenshot, paste it, you can crop it, crop only the pattern which you desire. In this case, we're working with AK-47. Crop it, use the magic tool to get this stupid background out of the place. Actually, we need to create a new layer, set it to a new layer, add this with shift, and also erase this. Control A to deselect. Now we can simply scale it. I get something like this, you can make it much more better. This will act such uh, as a pointer to you so that you can know where exactly and which values to actually measure. So this concludes the process of actually making and scaling up and down the values of compensation for a gun so that you can replicate the pattern and compensate the recall using your no recall program. There is one more thing though. After you're done with this and you scale it up all down all the values, you get the values and everything, and you will try it. For some people, it will not work. The compensation will be pretty bad. Well, there's a lot of reasons why would that be, but also you need to take into account the sensitivity of the game. I don't think I said this, but the sensitivity of the game is a multiplier of the raw input of your mouse, which goes into the game. Meaning that those values which you just calculated will be made to work with a one-to-one -one ratio between the raw input of the uh, of the mouse and the actual sensitivity of the game. What do you do if you want to play the game with a lower or higher sensitivity? It's really simple. I do it in my program. Let me show it to you. You'll just need to take every single value from the X and Y components, 
and you will need to divide it by your sensitivity and set it equal to that. Great. All right. So now we're overall done with explaining how you can get the no recall values, which is, in my opinion, the most crucial thing that you have to do to actually achieve such a program. But there's another thing I want to talk about. I want to talk about smoothness because and explain a little bit what it is. I made this little diagram thing. Let's say these are two different points, okay? And from here to in your cursor is here. And send input moves your cursor here. Simple, right? Now that is one whole movement to get here. What if you want to make this smoother? How do you do it? Well, you simply divide this one movement into smaller movements, into fractional movements, and move, the, uh, move to those movements instead. Instead of having one movement, you have five movements, for example. So instead of bam, bam, you go bam, 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 like really fast. All right. So why am I mentioning this? Well, because in your calculations and finding out the no recall values, you might see that your values won't be uh, always even. It'll be like 22, 33, 67, whatever, okay? So what do you do when you have values like this? One simple answer. Simply, first of all, find out the smoothing factor which you, which you want in your program. Well, I have three in total smoothing settings. I have rigid, semi-rigid, and smooth. Rigid, it's one movement for each movement. Semi-rigid divides uh, one movement into two movements and smooth, which is five fractional movements from one movement. After you find out those uh, the values in which you want to use for your smoothing, you will now need to round up or down your no recall compensation values. Let's say these they are, these are the no recall compensation values, which is really unrealistic, but still rounded them up to up or down to values that are both divisible by two and five in this case. So that being tens, for example, instead of 22, 20, instead of 33, 30, instead of 67, 70, and so on, right? Great. Before I end off this video, I will not like to mention another thing. Talk a little about delay and overhead compensation, which is another thing which can be a problem. When you have your, uh, when you have your smoothness, let's say soft smoothness, as I said, instead of one movement, you have five little, uh, little movements. But that also means that there's going to be five function calls, one after the other, really fast. If you have a smoothing factor such as 10, which is really high, you're going to have 10 function calls to be done in a really short amount of delay. Also, what the hell would the delay be for each gun? Well, don't worry about that. It's pretty easy. You can calculate it by yourself. Not too hard. For example, each AK-47 shot is 100 millisecond apart, meaning that in a rigid smoothing setting, when each movement is equal to one movement and you have 30 movements, yeah, you will have 100 millisecond delay per each shot. And what if it is semi-rigid? From theory, you would then have 60 little uh, movements in total doubles, right? Well, by logic, you would say, uh huh, well, if initially each movement was 100 milliseconds apart, and now there is two movements to do to get there, it would be simply be half that, right? Well, guess what? It isn't. Because, like I said, there is some overhead compensation which you would need to do. What that means is that the function calls are going to be too many for your actual program to handle uh, other stuff that affects this. Your CPU speed, your RAM, and all that. Meaning that to actually find the true delay, you need to play around with those values and trial and error a little bit, which is exactly what I did here. I actually have different uh, delay types. <laughs> I have a delay, this, this is delay after each consecutive shot, and this is a delay after each set of shots. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope you learned something maybe new. Also hope that you maybe got inspired by such program. Maybe you were going to start making one. I'm going to, as I said, link a GitHub source to this in the description of the video. Hope you have a good one. See you.